Hello and good morning and welcome to another week in our garden. This week, as you can see, we're going to show you how I string my onions. I've done these four to start me off. I've got another, at least another three strings to do. So if I do a couple of strings with you, if you want to do it, then you'll be able to string yours as well. It's a good way of storing them. I actually keep them in the shed and periodically I'll just come and give them a spin to make sure they're all all right and then as Diane wants to use them she just lifts them up and cuts them off with the scissors at the neck and that way you can use your onions from the top down. So let's have a go at stringing the onion. String wise I'm using cord. Now I use cord because when you've got your onions strung they are very very heavy. There's what four, eight, twelve. There's 17 onions in a string so there's a, a good weight in them so if you're using wheat string obviously once you've finished it's going to snap and we don't want that. So if you can use a good strong cord and there will be four lengths of cord so that's really going to take some weight i'll show you how i do it first of all i put a little knot in the end obviously that's the best way with cord and we want i'm doing mine as you can see about 40 centimeters which is about, about there. If you make them a lot longer, you can always cut your string off, put a good knot in it and then retie it. And then we go one, two, that's three, sorry, and four. And then we just cut that off. that away and same again I put a knot in the other end to save it pulling through the final knot make sure nice and tight then pull both knots together and we put a tie in it nice that now really really pull that tight and then open them up and give them a good make sure it's nice and tight then that we double up hang it on the hook that you're going to make the onions on and put the knot at the bottom and that's how I start I'll just take you through the ones I'm going to use I use a biggest one now as you can see I don't skin my onions too much only the, not the loose bits off the rest I leave on because that's a good waxy coating to protect the onions in storage so I don't skin them back now I take a largest one that would be the base and then I work in fours so for about the same large and then not four, not quite so big. And then four, and then four small ones put on the top. It doesn't always work like that, but onions come in all different shapes and sizes. But that's the basic. So we'll take the big one. On the strings again. Then all I do is I make a loop by folding the two back lock and then I push the onion through tie it up to the top of the onion and then pull down like that so that onion sits there nice and tight and then just take the tail off a little bit like that and then just make sure that's nice then we can start take a little bit of the 
leaf off. Whatever you do, don't take too much of this off because what will happen is that look, it, once it breaks, that's not enough to use string, so that will be one of the first ones And then we just open up two strings either side, put the onion in, get it nice and on the side look so it's balanced and then we go round all of the strings and as you can see back through one and then just push down gently push down if you push too hard you'll snap the onion off and what I find is after they've been strung a while and these necks have really dried out they're quite strong in the middle the next one that's good and good onion so we open it up on a different pair of strings and then pop it in that's quite a big onion you know? get it so it sits something like and then round and through one of the strings there you go and then just push down Now with these big onions you get a lot of neck so the next one we put on we'll put the neck underneath I'll show you. I'll just take some that's fine. So another pair of strings not the same ones there look push that through and sitting down something like where it wants to be about there I think and instead of going round the top we just slide it underneath and then through one of these strings like that and we just cut that off remember don't cut too close to the string and don't cut the string this one's got quite a thick neck quite a big onion I'll change that one for one a little bit smaller and then if I just pop that down a second same again not through those two separate strings put it through before you start just make sure it sits nice there you are and because it's the last one going on you go around the top and then through one of the strings press down and that's ready I'll do one more layer with you so you can see it growing you see how that one's not quite sat as tight as we'd like so we'll just tighten it a bit you see I'd rather have it there so it sits nice and should go round and through there that's better here's the next four we're going to do roughly about the same and I'll just take that off look just to thin it down a little bit now we'll start the next layer by opening up the four strings and putting that on now just look there you see it's no good putting it like that or like that it's got to be just on the fall so it looks half decent when you finish it's difficult because the onions are all different sizes but if you try to get them something like as you go then it looks better at the end there you are look give it a bit of a tail and then a little bit of a push down This one, same again, split the, the four, push it through and can you see where that sits beautifully on there? No? But this one will flick it underneath, just else the top gets too congested with the tying pieces, if you know what I mean. This will be up here else if you don't put one or two underneath. And then just 
doesn't it? So we pull the pull the strings apart so they're on a separate to the last one, not like that. Put the onion neck through and then just sort of balance it for coming out so it's nice and straight. Take it round, then as you come round, push it through one of the strings and then just tighten down a little. That's fine, we'll get another one in there. Then just cut that little tail off. There we go then. All I'm doing here is taking the really, the really stuff that wants, that's better look. Now this one we're going to put in there. So we open it up on a separate to the last one. Yeah. Oh, excuse me. Must be the pollen. There you go, look. And then through it goes. And before you start wrapping, just make sure it's all balanced up all right. Like that. You see that, look? That one might be upside down. That's nice. That's, that's a good one round the top because it's the last onion on the line and then through a bit of a press down just keep them nice and tight and then just take the take the tail off there you go it's beginning to look something we've got one two so we'll have three four now i should just finish this one off and then Diane will show you what we harvested on the potatoes. These are the last of the potatoes now, they're all gone now. So we'll just show you what we got out the last two plots. Hello, it's Tuesday morning now, another wonderful day. And I've actually dug the potatoes up. We'll just show you what they've produced. This is the Sapo Mira. With uh, four rows of these that I've dug up. Not too bad at all. One or two was a bit rotten, but we expect that. These are the other two rows of the Sapo Mira. They're Charlotte. They are a second early, but I've let them grow through and they've done quite well actually. The ones with the patchy red on, they're the King Edwards. Not a huge crop of King Edwards, and but the uh, then there's one root in there, Charlotte. I don't know how that happened, but they they're good potatoes. Now a lot of people have struggled this year with the blight. We've been reasonably lucky. It's sort of passed us over this year. We've lost a few that have gone rotten in the ground and there's not a lot of slug damage this year but i have got a problem with the mice so any potatoes near the top of the soil have been chewed a bit so there's quite a bit of waste so next year i'll have to do something about the mice obviously we're out in the middle of nowhere they live here too now this quadrant here i'm going to put the garlic in when it arrives. It hasn't arrived yet, but when browns send it, I split them down and put. I'm going to put them in here. Now, when I was digging the potatoes, the soil seemed a bit loose and bitty, so I top dressed it with some of the chicken straw, which is chopped barley straw, what we put in the chicken pens. And I'm going to fork that in before I plant. Now because it's straw and it's going to be decomposing, I will need to put a little bit of nitrogen in to replace the nitrogen that's going to be taken up by the straw decomposing. But that's no problem, a bit of bone meal will cover that. All, uh, all I'll do is literally just turn it in with the fork like that up 
just keep going along, turn it in, and you'll find that the worms and the rain, etc., will soon wash this down. Can you see the the soil seems a bit, although it is still open, but perhaps a bit too open for me. So the straw will bring it back to normal. There you are, though. and I should do the do the whole bed like that. Dig it well in. Make sure you go full full fork down to get it in. I'll just go halfway. And just tidy it up. Now I shall dig that through today and then I shall scatter a bit of bone meal in it before I fork it in. Obviously it's no good putting it on the top. And then that's ready for the garlic when it arrives. Now we've got those potatoes stored nicely in trays in the bottom shed. I'm pleased to have got those in and a nice crop. A nice crop of potatoes on a bad year this year. But anyway, back to the onions. I've done one, two, three. This is the last layer going on now. These are a little bit smaller as you can see as we've gone up. So it's the same again basically. I open it up, put the onion neck through. What you'll find is as you get towards the top, we're getting a lot of weight on, so the strings can be a bit difficult to get apart. But persevere, they will, you can get them, you can get them in. And press down a little to make it sit nicely and then take all that off. It's best not to leave too much of the old onion tops in the middle because they'll attract the damp air and they could go mildewy so it's best to do minimum if you can. Right, there we go again then. Let me see in there look. Just pop it down. Go round, we'll go under this one, why not? There you are. Then round, as normal, through one of the strings. If I snap that one, that's fine. And then, two more then. Get the onion, as you say, I hardly skin them at all. Put this through. A different gap, sit it on nicely, and then you can go round and back through one of the strings. Look, just pull it down and push it down a little, and then cut that off. Last one, then, this is a funny shaped onion, but it'll go, it'll fit in there nicely. Look, we'll adjust it once we get it in. There you are, that'll do nicely. Take it round. If it's a long neck like this one, go round twice. It's the last one anyway, so. And then press down. And there's that much weight on this cord now that it's actually gripping, gripping the tops of the onions with the weight. And there it is. So we'll take this one over there and hang it up. As I was saying, there's a quite a weight of onions there, so some really, really strong hooks you'll need, especially in the shed where you go to store them. I put them out here, and whilst the weather's like this, I want them in the sunshine, but as soon as the weather turns, in the shed. I do believe we've got some bad weather coming so they will go in the shed after today and then we'll have a look at the weather to what we're going to do with them. 
remember I use a 40 centimeter piece of cord four lengths and then that gives me that sort of effect with 17 onions on them so if you put more onions on obviously you're going to get more weight so you really really are heavy so let's do a 14 i'll get on I'm actually one onion short in this one to make the the top is a three instead of a four but we've run out of onions now but that'll do fine now there's two here that we're not going to use we will use them in the house but not for stringing can you see that's got another a double if you like in it growing on the side so we'll use that one straight away and this one the top this was going to be the bottom of that one but I felt the top and it felt a bit soft and if you can see there's a dark marking round there and the neck just felt a bit damp so when I looked at it it was definitely rotting from the top down so whether Diane can slice it through and use the nice bottom there you are that's how I string my onions they are a lot safer like this 
so as I said before I can just spin them and have a look make sure all the they're okay and Diane can always come down and just cut them off if she wants them or probably ask me to take them up now you can if you wish hang them in the house but really you need a very cool and airy place we're actually in a house or a pantry although we don't have pantries these days but in the house it might be just a bit too warm for them they need to be cold and airy and they'll be fine they don't want bright sunshine once they've matured they're fine now that'll be it for this week i hope you've enjoyed it do have a go at stringing some onions you'll enjoy doing it then we'll see you next week where we'll cut the old canes out of the blackberry and tie the new ones in for next season's crop so thank you for watching many many thanks for subscribing we do appreciate it and we'll see you next week take care everyone